Have you ever considered making a guide on analyzing gameplay? So, a lot of people ask me for this sort of thing, and the problem with that is that analysis is fundamentally based on game knowledge. Like, it's... The, the the most of the guide of particularly analyzing the game is just like knowing what to look for it's knowing what actually wins games it's having thought about it a lot um my analysis is based on having been a competitive player already and then going back and looking at what kinds of mistakes players were making at lower levels of play at like you know i in splatoon 2 i worked my way up from from c rank on a fresh account and recorded all the gameplay and looked at like what is happening that I would consider a mistake and how do I want to art articulate that and that's kind of how I developed my knowledge that I base my coaching on um so it takes like that sort of learning of the game that many hours and that much study to be as effective a coach you can be there are some things that go beyond just game knowledge because I'm not the most knowledgeable analyst or coach or anything like that um, in terms of top-level gameplay, what's really important is knowing, like, the majority of the people who come to you, what mistakes are they going to make? And those are not going to be, like, top-level players that are coming to you. Once someone's a top-level player, they're coaching themselves. Like, they're analyzing for themselves. They're go maybe going to, like, a top-level analyst like FLC occasionally. There are some coaches who are caught up enough with the game that they can talk about that at a top level because they're also playing top-level scrims alongside them. But... For the most part, like, the people who are going to come to you for coaching, the, the wider audience of people who actually need the help, are more in that, like, low ink to maybe still climbing up to X rank sort of level. And so it's finding the, the errors that those players make that's really going to make you the best coach possible. And that's what I have the most knowledge of. Um, so hopefully that helped at least somewhat, but... It's really something that's hard to just teach. I can't just make a video and explain, like, here are the things that you want to be looking for, and now you're a good coach. Because I was a teacher, and my knowledge and skill that I developed from going to school for teaching and then professionally teaching for three years has all built into this. Not to mention the tutoring that I was doing in order to help practice for becoming a teacher. Um the teaching that I was doing at a, a tutoring center, but also the tutoring that I was doing at college for writing. Like, th there was, there's a lot that has built into this skill that I have. Um, it's not something that I could just readily give to someone that quickly. Pedagogy be like, exactly, right? Like, pedagogy is not a matter of... Uh, pedagogy is the study of teaching, for those who don't know. Um, pedagogy is not the, a matter of knowing better than everybody else. That's what a professor does, okay? A professor's job is to actually be a leading mind, to be one of the, like, five people in the world who knows their tiny, tiny, tiny slice of information better than anybody else on Earth. That's what a professor's for. I, in my position in the Splatoon community, am not a professor. I am a teacher. A teacher's job is to know what the friggin' ninth graders are gonna screw up on their quizzes, okay? That's a very different skill set. And what the teacher really knows that's valuable has nothing to do with that content matter, because they learned that content matter a long time ago. It's not like they're an especial expert on that. Maybe they're a little bit more knowledgeable because they're up to date on it. They remember it. They had to construct curriculum around it, so they had to figure out ways to teach it. They're a little bit better than the average person at knowing their grammar or whatever. But, like, you compare them to a professional writer, let's say, and an English teacher is probably actually a little bit worse because they're gonna, they're not going to be able to practice quite as much. Um, but what a, an English teacher is really good at is knowing what the ninth graders aren't going to know and communicating the information in a way that will get them from not knowing to knowing as fast as possible. They know what quiz questions their, their 180 students got wrong last year. And that knowledge which is really, really crucial to teaching the next group of ninth graders is something that a professional writer does not know or a professor does not know. Um, a lot of the time you get really far up in your field and you forget what things you screwed up and when. You forget like what the common errors are going to be. So that's really what a coach needs to be good at. Like if you're going to try and coach 
the widest audience possible, you, what you really need to hone in on is not top level play. You need to, you know, have an, an, an opinion and an understanding of top level play, but your job really is to know what they're going to mess up at that level, not at the top level. I had to go from college top choir to teaching people who don't sing a song and you have to start it at such different information. Exactly. Like what you were learning at that top level doesn't help you anymore. If I were to become a math teacher, unless I'm teaching like seniors in high school, I don't need to know the top level of math that I learned in school. I don't need to know differential equations. That's not really helping me. What's helping me maybe is some practice that I got at calculus there, and that might help me with the high schoolers. If I'm teaching like sixth grade algebra though, differential equations is not going to be useful to me at all. What's going to be useful to me is how do I teach sixth graders algebra?